All right, welcome back to another episode of a Guild Wars 1 playthrough in Nightfall. Uh, last episode, we f did a bunch of side quests. Uh, the command post quest line. Helping to increase our foothold, Sunspear foothold in Corona. I'm pretty sure this region is called Corona. I kind of wish they had some, like, like in Guild Wars 2. I wish they had some... I mean, I guess they kind of do. They have the areas, like, labeled, and the outposts labeled, but I, I would like to see, like, the regions. Like, this is Korna, this is Istan. Bobby is somewhere up here, I think. Uh, but yeah, I kind of wish, so we knew exactly what region we are based on the map. Anyway, uh, I am going to continue on with the primary quest, the mysterious message, and I think we're going to get to choose a new hero. Uh, uh, and I say choose because I think it's going to be we actually we have to choose one or the other coming up if i remember correctly um yeah i am going to be doing some exploring here and there intermittently as i'm going through the primary quest i don't really want to do like multiple episodes back to back where i'm just like capturing skills and exploring i just i want to mix it up a little bit and i like i like the feeling of forward progression so yeah if you're wanting me to do some uh, certain content definitely let me know what you're looking for and then I'll make sure I I include it in uh, But at the same time, I also like progressing with the storyline. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna get my companions here um, Who did I like last time we need I Think I like to tell Korra build more than Dunkora and then we're gonna run Menlo the healer Plus, let's go with the motivation for the support. And then we'll go to Aiden. Is, I can't remember if Aiden has poison or bleeding or burning. So actually, let's grab... Let's grab Sin. Yeah. And then... I got a new skill last time. I th I was thinking all day what how I'm going to use it, but actually I don't think I'm going to use it. I picked up extend conditions last episode, and I'm going to do something a little bit weird. I'm going to make <laughs> Elias carry it. So I'm going to get rid of his Discord. He's going to run um, Inspiration. And I know certain people hate having an elite skill from a non uh from a secondary profession but i want to see this build or this skill in action and i don't really want to keep it on my skill bar so i'm kind of stuck with it um i'm gonna take a couple out of soul reaping yeah he doesn't have any soul reaping skills so i can he this this is just giving him an energy boost um Soul Reaping gives you one energy whenever a non-spirit creature dies. For each point of Soul Reaping. So he'll get 10, how, or 10 energy up to 3 times every 15 seconds. Which is kind of a lot. And we're going to put the rest into Inspiration. I think 8 is enough. Yeah. Increases duration by 56. What if we max Inspiration? What would that look like? Almost double... The condition duration that's pretty crazy uh that's a little bit overkill so we'll do this yeah and then i'm gonna run a fragility build using since <laughs> since he's running um a non-second or a secondary elite skill i'm also gonna do it it's kind of weird I kind of want to bring back the virulence. Is that going to be worth it? Maybe not. Maybe not, actually. I want to bring back my... Um, Fever Dreams build. Or Ineptitude. Or Shared Burden. Let's bring back Fever Dreams, yeah. Because I need as many uh, conditions as possible. But hold on, let me set my skills real quick. 
All right, and I finished my skill bar, bringing back the Fever Dreams build, and yeah, he's gonna be running Extend Condition, so he's got weakness that he puts on. I put on at least two conditions myself. I put on Deep Wound and Fever Dreams. Honestly, that's not many, is it? But then Koss has Bleeding, and then Sin has Burning. I feel like I could have more. I need a good ranger henchman to really make this effective, but that's the best we got right now. Why am I missing my compass? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, I'm missing like everything. There we go. Interesting. All right, uh, so yeah, we need to go to Jahai Bluffs. We're going to travel to a rendezvous point, discover the origin of a mysterious message. If I find some elite skills on the way, of course, I'm going to... There's a skill trainer here now. Was there always one? Maybe not. Ah, oh, this is what happened. Okay, yeah, so the command post gets upgraded. I got a hero skills. I got a skill trainer, profession trainer. Some new hint Some new uh, merchants popped up. See, you have any skills that I didn't have before? Yeah, he's got a, kind of a lot. Wastrel's Demise. Hex resources my each second while hex all foes in adjacent hex and if they use a skill it ends that's not bad spiritual spiritual pain interesting this is like this is for taking out like ritualist spirits price of pride next time the, the foe uses an elite skill he loses energy I've never seen that one actually mistrust that's like clumsiness but it's a it's a it's for spells i think and it's only cast on one of my allies so it's pretty it's pretty specific but it is aoe i have almost all of the mesmers i'm i'm kind of leaning towards getting racial's dem demise oh no here we go we have more symbolic celerity your signets use your ca oh my goodness I need that for the keystone build. It makes all of my signets scale off of fast casting. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Holy cow. That makes me want to try the keystone build again. That's really good. Frustration. Oh, that's good for interrupt builds. I think I want to pick that one up as well. Another signet. It's like clumsiness, but it's... I have to cast it while they're attacking. And if it's an attack skill, they're knocked down. It's kind of like, it's really Bane Signet, but a little bit stronger. Man, I need to bring back Keystone, the Keystone build for sure. So Hypochondria is basically what, it's basically the same thing that um, Extend Conditions does. Yeah. So if you don't want to use extend conditions, you can just bring hypochondria, actually. It actually might be better to bring hypochondria instead of wasting an elite skill. I could bring that. But yeah, this gives the duration increase. Anyway, stop wasting time. Let's go. Let's go. Hero skills really quick. Putrid flash. That's a cool one. That would be good for Elias, actually. Yeah, let's pick that up. Bone Fiend. No. That's a good one, too. Alright. <laughs> I'll be right back. Let me upgrade Elias' skill bar now. He just got two new conditions that he that work with his build. So he's gonna run, get rid of that. He's gonna go putrid flesh. Oops. And instead of what else did I get? It's a blood magic.
Um, what was it called? I just forgot it. Oh my gosh. Here it is. Oh my gosh. March Fury. That's what I was looking for. Allies hitting the target full gain adrenaline when this hex ends. The person cracked on, but I need blood magic for that. Hmm. I could drop one more soul reaping for that. One, two, three. That gives four. That's not exactly worth it. And it's a 10 second recharge. Yeah, let's just use this one. All right. Now for real now. Let's go, go, go. So we're going to the Jahai Bluffs. Haven't spent too much time here. Oh, Zed has another. He's got another quest. We'll pick that up. And Milani has another quest. And cost as well. Might as well pick these up. Because they're good opportunities to explore. And capture some elite skills. Without just like. You know. Only doing. The elite skill uh, exploration. At least knocking out some quests at the same time is good. Pet Tamer. What does the pet tamer do? Do I does he let me tame a pet or do I have to bring him a pet? Oh, okay. So I give him one of my pets. No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. So, oh, it's right up here. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, we're going to meet the Master of Whispers again. And we're going to learn some cool lore about Palawa Joko. Anyone who played Guild Wars 2 will remember this. The name. That's not news. Everyone's in great danger these days. Especially you, it seems. With great danger comes great profit. You play a dangerous game, Corsair. And you don't, Hunter? I realize that the stakes here are higher than mere money. What could be more important than money? Your soul, child. They will need our help soon. Fine by me, as long as they're able to pay. I fear that they will pay most dearly. All right. So yeah, these are the two. These are the two characters that I get to choose between. So Masters of Whispers is a necromancer, I believe, and Margaret is obviously a ranger. I think generally I go with Masters of Whispers because he's a necromancer, and necromancers are really strong. But I I do already have a Olias. So I think I'm going to go with Margaret. Also, I like her quest a little bit better than Master of Whispers. It's not a, and, and this choice only lasts us until we finish the full campaign. At the end, we can always come back and get, go the other route. So I'm going to go with Margaret. I know where Cormir is and, and we'll help you get her out. Oh, Cormir is captured. How did I not know that? I mean, it kind of makes sense since she's been missing since that first mission that uh, we, she came with us on. So we need to go to Marga Coast, which I think she's just right outside Nundu Bay, actually. So if I teleport here, I think we can just pick her up. We kind of, with through our exploration, we kind of, got here earlier than we're supposed to i'm pretty yeah i'm pretty sure she's just right outside here yeah 
Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, definitely, definitely not. She's outside Yolan Haven, though, so I could just, yeah, do this. I'm not sure if you noticed, but left of Nundo Bay, there was that herdsman. I guess he's permanently located there after you do that quest. That'd be interesting if they made it that way. I don't know. I'm having second thoughts about running extend conditions on Elias. I think I'm going to get lots of hate for running this weird build. I'm more just interested in the effectiveness of that skill, though. And since it's an instant cast time, it doesn't necessarily need to be cast by a Mesmer primary. Like, it doesn't really get much benefit from fast casting. Took you long enough. What are you talking about? Alright. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do the blessing at the thing because it looks like it's a short quest. And I think, yeah, I'm probably not going to see any elite skills coming up. I need to run another class, profession, like do warrior or monk or something to get a more varied, various uh, skills, especially ranger. Like I have very limit. I haven't, I haven't captured many elite uh, ranger skills. I didn't check. Did he cast can extend conditions? Oof. Oh, I missed the. Uh, Fragility spike, so good. Are they chasing us? Boom, look at that damage. Can I go around? It looks like I can go around this way or over that way. We'll go under this way. We can fight that. I think there's a boss over here again. Admiral Chigan. Wow, they're just getting melted. They're only level 16 for some reason. Very easy. This is still one of my favorite builds. Like the Keystone, the Keystone build is pretty nice, but I just think I think this is way more reliable damage. It doesn't really matter if it's if the enemies are grouped or by themselves either. That was one thing I hated about the Keystone build is it was only effective in groups when they're grouped up. Ooh. Oh, it's a Ranger boss. Darn. What's he running? Burning arrow. Dang. That would be perfect. I'm going to have to come back and get burning arrow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, now I know where Burning Arrow is. Unlucky Simon. How did he get that name? Oh. Let's see if Neoli will drop a green item. That'd be great. Like you're gonna get beat at your own game. 
Contagious. Ooh, we got a rune. A rune of minor vigor. Here we go. Where is it at? Yeah. Uh, Beast Masters? Okay. We can give that to Margaret whenever we tame a pet for her. It's really not a great one, though. But I guess if you have a pet, you get... It's pretty much... It's essentially permanent plus 10 armor, so that's not horrible, actually. My name isn't a joke, and it isn't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost every bet I've ever made. How is he still alive? That's very sad. Sorry, Simon. Alright, now we gotta go all the way to Nundo Bay. I can't just teleport because... I think if I were to leave this, I think it would reset the quests. So I've gotta fight my way there, I guess. Probably, now that I'm doing this, like, thinking about this retroactively, or retrospectively, is that the word? Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, I should have done this quest, I should have started this quest along with the command post quest, because I think I could have completed them all at the same time. Because I was just over here last episode. I need to pay attention how I'm casting my spells. Kind of casting them out of order. Just kind of melting the enemies though. Elias is so strong, honestly. Is there level... How old, what level are the... Or level 14. And there's like... How many are there? Seven. That's crazy. And with this build... With this putrid f flesh... It makes them diseased. And I think disease... Automatic... It's, disease is the same thing as poison. But disease automatically spreads... Uh, among creatures of the same species. So, if all these insects, get one of them gets diseased, it'll automatically spread to them. But the question I had, I've always had though, is, is disease, if you can't, is it possible to have disease and poison at the same time? Because I know like, the spell virulence, the spell virulence, uh, it says, what does it do? Target foe is already suffering from a condition that foe suffers from disease, poison, and weakness. So that's, I think that's considered three separate conditions. Yeah, otherwise they wouldn't bother labeling it something different, right? It's a little confusing though because the health... The health bar looks the same as far as I can remember. If someone is diseased or poisoned, it turns the health bar green. But yeah, can anyone confirm that? Is it a, is, they're, they're totally, like you can have both conditions on at the same time, right? Disease and poison. Look at those numbers. Yeah, honestly, like in that situation, probably a keystone build would have put out more impressive numbers. But coupled with the amount of conditions that I'm putting on, I think this is a bit more effective. Because, I mean, we got deep wound, we got dazed, we got weakness, we got poison, we got bleeding, we got burning. That's kind of a lot of conditions, actually.
We already captured that skill before. That was a uh, uh, elemental attunement from that elementalist boss. Can I go all the way around here? It looks like it. It's kind of hugging the coast here. Probably would have been faster to go up and around that way, but maybe it's about the same. Oh, we get a good look at the outpost from here. I like that. Gosh. They're just nuked. Like, the, the amount of degeneration they get from all the conditions is crazy. Cracked armor and weakness would be a pretty a pretty good uh, addition. I mean, I already do weakness, but cracked armor would be nice. Then my all of these minions and costs would do extra damage. Icy shackles. Makes me like crawl. I think that's like 90% uh, movement speed decrease. Nice current and chest right up here. I need to make sure I talk. I open the chest before because I think I get teleported after this. Oh, it got broken. But we got an air staff, a gold air staff. Where'd it go? There it is. Um, not bad. The perfect and the perfect strength and honor inscription is the best part, actually. If I salvage this, ah, I got destroyed. Anyway, I can use that for a bow or something. There are at least two sides of everything, and they usually pay just as well. It makes no sense to pick one when you can cash in on both. All right, spoken like an evil merchant. Uh, this isn't what it looks like. In fact, it's not even what you think it looks like. Well, okay, it is pretty much exactly what you think. Okay, great, great job. Now we need to see Margaret's sly for your reward, and she is right here. Nice. So I could, I think I, I think I could go back and do the other quest if I wanted to, but if I complete this one, she joins the party. So we'll go ahead and pick this up. Another of my crew, the Jack of Truths. Let's go ahead and do this quest also. We need to go to Polgon Passage. So we'll start in Yolan Haven. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll keep this build. It's going well. I just hope I can find another Mesmer. Mesmer boss. Arc Jock Ward. Sure is a lot of like teleporting around going to different outposts. They just made, they made Alona so spread out. So they kind of needed all these little small outposts here and there. All right, we'll actually lean, kneel here because I think this is going to be a long one. Uh, Balthazar. You attack 10% faster? No. Armor penetration, fire attribute, warrior attribute, scythe, command, spear. None of these are really good for us. I guess, yeah, I'm not going to spend any money. 
I mean, that's great for like a warrior or something. Just trying to get fever dreams on everyone and fragility on everyone. And clumsiness is so strong. I think clumsiness is, I honestly like it almost better than empathy. Even though it only interrupts one attack, it causes a knock, it's, it's a, it's almost like a knockdown really short knockdown and it prevents the damage that the enemy was going to attack with and it does aoe damage so empathy empathy just punishes them for attacking but it lets the damage go through which honestly i think it's better that it doesn't look at these numbers yeah there's so many they're getting so many conditions Actually, now that you think, now that I'm thinking of it, Fever Dreams and Extend Conditions kind of do the same exact thing. <laughs> I think it's overkill to have Fever Dreams, isn't it? There's no reason to have both of these. I should have gone in Aptitude. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of nice having that extra... I don't know. They're a little bit too similar now that I'm thinking, seeing it. Because this spreads all the conditions to foes in the area. And this spreads all the conditions to foes in the area. This is, it's kind of... They're kind of doing the exact same thing. But this, this also extends them. So if I look at it that way, it... It's still pretty nice. Because I think that's the only skill in the game that extends conditions durations. Aside from the items that do it, right? Wow. That ravenous gaze is so deadly, man. Okay, we gotta go all the way around here to Pogon Passage. We're just gonna hug this wall. Oh, I got a Paragon boss. What's he got? Anthem of Envy. Oh, we got attacked on two fronts. Mandragores every time. Whenever you're not expecting enemies that show up, it's always going to be a Mandragore. Ooh. Max damage. Low requirement. Purple sword. Oh, it's really bad. Looks cool, though. That's a cool looking sword. Not as good as Koss's sword. He's using Sakai's sword that I I farmed in a previous video. If you did not check out that video, the new proof farming method part two. Highly recommend it. It's a very satisfying video. I, that's something else I need to do coming up. Wow, 317 gold. That's a huge gold drop. Uh, I need to find an item worth farming and do a part three of the new proof farming method. It probably probably be one of the like some of these bosses here might be worth farming. I'd have to look up Neoli's uh, Neoli the Contagious's um, item. But that might be a good one to farm. Anyway. 
All right, sorry about that. I was halved out of my game for a second. My teammates cleared it up though. I guess I'm just not that effective. They don't even need me over here. Headbutt, that's a good skill. I don't know. I th I think the only the only s condition I'm missing is um cracked armor and crippled actually. That's pretty good. I have almost all of the conditions among all of these uh heroes. I think having a, if I added an assassin to the build, or to the team, it might be better. Like maybe getting rid of the blood henchman or something and putting in an assassin. Assassins generally can apply a lot of different conditions in a very short amount of time. Assassin or ranger. Rangers are very good at applying conditions. I'm not sure exactly how I want to play Margit. I could play her as an interrupter. I could play her as a barrage damage. Ooh, we got another boss here. Whoa, look at that damage. Moti Dark Flower. Wow. I mean, yeah, Fever Dreams and Extend Conditions, aside from the spreading aspect, they do at they do secondary condition, um, secondary effects that are both pretty good. It's not a total waste. Shouldn't be so hard on myself. <laughs> All right, um, clearing up some of this stuff. What did I just get? Did he drop something? Am I crazy? Depravity. Whenever target foe casts a spell, that foe and one nearby foe, only one nearby foe, so it chooses the nearby foe at random, lose one energy. That's an interesting one. It's kind of like backfire. But instead of damaging them when they cast spells, it just it takes away their energy i wonder how i wonder how high that energy scale the the loss of energy scales up if it can go up to at least like five energy and then it's affecting two enemies at once that's pretty good that 15 second cooldown is not great hmm that would be good Combine that with Mind Rack or something, and then you can, uh, could proc some pretty big damage spikes. That's interesting. I don't think I can go that way. I gotta go up and around this way. I gotta go past this. I gotta go through the stronghold, actually, don't I? I've never used that skill. Depravity. Looks like Elias is going to be running that next <laughs> next uh, next uh, episode. Ooh. Oh, I love seeing all those numbers. Careful, don't go there. I got interrupted. They kind of spread out a little bit. I wanted to get them all under 
fever dreams and fragility, but let's wait till they group up. There's two groups here. I want them to combine. Doesn't look like it's going to happen though. Oh, they're only level 16. I just bulldoze through them. Ah, there's the avatar of Grint here. I should start running Dervish as a secondary to pick up those avatar um, Dervish elites. I love the avatar elites for Dervish. They're so, they're so cool. Probably one of the coolest elite skills that any profession has. I think we're gonna over aggro here. Hopefully not. Yeah, they're moving that way. By the time we take this group out, these this group might start moving in though. Oh, I thought they had enchantment on them. Go 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 go. Go, 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 go. I don't want to fight. I just want to go. I think this is going to be it. This will lead us to the next area that will be the starting spot for uh, the next mission. And it's a pretty fun mission, I think. It's a very unique mission compared to the other ones. Didn't really need to talk that guy because we're already at the end. Am I supposed to be escorting Margaret? I don't think so. I think she's just here already in Pogon Passage. Cutscene? No? Alright. Let's get rid of these. Party. We'll pull up our low level hint, uh, heroes. And we'll level up. Hopefully when Margaret comes into the party, we... She's level 20. That would be ideal. Did I? Okay. Huh? Waylay a squad of coordinate guards and borrow their armor. Oh, we're not done yet. Okay, we have a little bit more to go. Let's get the group back up. No, Talcora. She's better. Okay. The Moon Fortress. I guess it's called Moon Fortress because it looks like a moon. I wonder if it was inspired by... Uh, I feel like it was inspired by the Death Star in Star Wars for some reason. What do you say? You know, Death Star looks like a moon. But it's actually an evil fortress of the of the empire. Oh, I need to get another signet of capture. Uh, we're already we're already here though. Hopefully there's no. Hopefully there's no bosses that I'm gonna miss out on. Let's just double check unsuspecting Kernan guard. Yeah. Is she coming with us? Yeah, she is. No? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if Jack was right about this current patrol. 
I don't know what's patrolling. It looks like they're just hanging out on the beach. Can't blame them, though. It's a very chaotic battle. They're all spread out. Oh, I miss ineptitude. Look at that damage. 128. Ineptitude and clumsiness are very, very, uh, good together. But, actually, it's better, it's better to make sure they proc ineptitude and then put clumsiness after. Or, uh, or vice versa. If you put both of them on together, the clumsiness will actually prevent ineptitude from activating. Because clumsiness prevents the attack. The attack is interrupted. And ineptitude, you actually want the you want the attack to succeed. So interesting fact there. Sets of handmade Kernan recruit armor crafted by centaur laborers. Let's put it on. We are ready. Does this start the mission? I don't think so. Just a cutscene, I guess. You sure this is going to work? No. Would you prefer to storm the gates? I tried it once. Didn't work. Okay, then. Try to act normal. You there, soldier, report. Um, all clear. <laughs> what are all these bodies doing here? Peasants, sir. They were suspected of harboring sun spears. We dealt with them. Good. Bail will be pleased. He's on the warpath right now about the sun spears. Keep your wits about you, and you'll keep your heads. Carry on. They don't recognize their own soldiers. Far so good. We may spring Cormir yet. Diadem first, prisoner second. All right. Okay, and with that, we are set up to do the next mission area. Let's go ahead and unlock Margaret the Sly. So I'll pull these guys up one more time. Talk to Jack of Truths. And uh, hopefully he's in my hits level 20 here. Ah. Oh, not quite. A native of Freeman's Cove, Margaret is a Corsair, descended from a long line of Corsair. She rolls with the punches, profits from her experience, and most importantly, enjoys her work. Very cool, henchman. So I'm going to drop... For the next episode, I'm going to go Margaret because I have to, of course. And then I'm going to go Don Coro and Elias. What does she come with? She doesn't even come with an elite skill. Um, she does have apply poison, so that's nice. Be perfect for our continuation of our fragility build. I don't think I'm going to run extend conditions anymore. Uh, for her, I think I'm going to go back and get... Uh, I, I have Burning Arrow unlocked on this account, but I'm going to go ahead and go back and capture Burning Arrow there later so that I can use it legit. Uh, but that's a pretty good... That's going to be a pretty good um, build, I think, for her. So she will be able to do Applied Poison. She's going to do Burning Arrow... So poison and burning right there. And then maybe a bleeding. So she's got three. She'll have three different conditions. Poison, burning, bleeding. That's pretty nice. And actually, look how, look how long the burning is from burning arrow. Five seconds. If you add that with uh, extend conditions, that's like seven and a half sec, almost eight seconds. Maybe it rounds up to 8 seconds, actually. I'm not sure. But 8 seconds of burning is a crazy long time. Actually, that's an that's not a bad build. I like it. Very good. 
all right anyway we'll end the episode here next episode we'll be going into gundara the moon fortress so uh i'll see you guys there peace